Hello everybody and welcome to our special course from the smallest to the largest projects with the Grand MA3 product range. My name is Daniel and I work for the MA Lighting International Tech Support. Today we want to have a look at different installations. Installations like theatres, musical houses, architectural lighting, cruise ships or houses of worship. You will see that these installations have a lot of different requirements and issues they come over with and we need solutions for this. So we will have a look at our Grand MA3 product range and we will see which products we can use to combine them in our network to fit these different requirements in the different installations. Let's have a look at our agenda. First of all, we will have a look at some requirements in lighting projects. So we will see what it needs to build up a system from the smallest to the largest projects. And we will also have a look at some examples of network infrastructure in different environments. Then we will have a look at the Grand MA3 product range and we will see which products help us to build up this network infrastructure in different projects. We will have especially a look at the Dean Rail devices. These Dean Rail devices are invented for an easy mounting in fixed installations and of course can help us a lot in different projects. Furthermore, we want to make use of some clever network tools and we will see some tools which the Graname 3 software already provides us. To improve our workflow from the design via the planning to the lighting control, we will have a look at GDTF and MVR. GDTF as the new standard to describe fixture types and MVR as a database to exchange data from visualizers, programming tools directly in our lighting control system. And of course, last but not least, we want to have a look at our training and support possibilities to get started with the system. But first of all, let's come back to some requirements in lighting projects. One of the main requirements in lighting projects is definitely reliable backup scenarios. Of course, if a device fails, we want to have some scenarios where another device can take over and where we have a reliable system where we take the control at any time. In live situations, it is even more important to have this reliable backup scenarios. So, of course, our system has to offer solutions for that. Another story is the scalability of the system. That means we start maybe with a really small system, but we want to be able to add parameters, to add control devices in a very simple and easy way. If our project gets bigger, if we have to control more devices or if we work with some more users in our environment. And that's already the third requirement. We want to work in multi-user environments. Especially when the projects get bigger, there is not only one operator, one user which controls the whole system. There are different operators for the show lighting, the effect lighting, the key lighting, maybe a control of media servers or other third-party devices. Here we have to make sure that our system offers us the possibilities to work with different users in a multi-user environment. Of course, sometimes we also want to integrate incoming signals to our system, like a remote connection to a third-party system, or we want to remote control or trigger some of our sequences or looks by using some signals like MIDI or timecode or analog remotes. Therefore, our system has also to offer some possibilities in our project. And of course, we want to have one system where we connect control, visualization, video and media. So our system has to take care that it provides the infrastructure to do this. What we need at the end is a complete system integration. Let's have a look at some examples. Here we can see one network infrastructure for a temporary project, for example. At the bottom we can see different consoles and these different consoles exactly offer to work in this multi-user environment. We can see one console for the effect lighting, one console for the video and media server operator and of course a backup console. Remember, one of the requirements was that we have reliable backup scenarios. All these consoles combined in a network can offer us this multi-user environment. 
Next to the control devices, we also have to take care of our network backbone. And you can see some network switches, of course, which have to deliver the network backbone to connect all the different devices. On the right side, you can see a Grandma 3 processing unit. When we have a look at the products later on in detail, you will see that this processing unit enables some parameters for our system. So this is a device which offers us the scalability of a system to add more parameters if our system gets bigger. And of course, we have to take care that our network data, so all data which is handled in our system so far, gets to our devices we want to control. Therefore, we have to change the network data to DMX and we have to output DMX at several places. That's the nodes you can see on top of that system which deliver the DMX signal for LED bars or the moving lights, for example. And on the top right corner, you can see another requirement we already talked about. We want to integrate some incoming signals. So like a show trigger via the OSC protocol, or we want to connect some other third-party devices like an external media server with the ArtNet protocol. So all of these things have to work together in one system. In example number two, we can see a typical situation within a fixed installation like a theater or a musical. Again, you can see two consoles which deliver a reliable backup scenario. And you can see the network switches for our network backbone as well. But sometimes we want to add some more devices in our system like an on PC, which is a backup as well, or a device where we can have a look at some sequences in between. Or we want to have a fader extension, which you can see on the right side as well, like this Grandma 3 extension, which you can use for your stage manager, for example, to control some sequences directly from stage. And again, on the left side, we have our nodes, which transfer our Ethernet, so our network data, to DMX, to the specific places, to our moving lights, to our LEDs, and maybe to some DMX in and outputs on our stage. In the third example, we can see a typical situation in an installation like a television studio. Here we have a network in between. So we have an IT network which already connects different studios, different rooms in our installation. But to be honest, we do not know what happens in between within the network. Of course, we have to make sure that all our devices work together and therefore sometimes we build some smaller networks and connect them via the existing house network. Then of course sometimes we have to get support of our IT guys within the house, but we have to make sure that it works. At the end you can see with the different projects we always have different requirements and maybe different infrastructures we have to take care of. Now we want to have a look at the Grandma 3 product range to see which products help us in which situation. Complete system integration means that all devices can work together in one network. We will have a look at the Grandma 3 product range now to see which devices we can combine to build up our lighting control system. And this starts with the smallest possible networks up to the largest installations. Let's see which devices we can use from the Grandma 3 range. When we have a look at the Grandma 3 products, we start with the control solutions, so the Grandma 3 consoles. We offer a wide range of consoles to serve projects from the smallest to the largest level. The most important thing is all consoles work with the same software and can be combined in the network in all the different ways. Especially the features and the functionality is the same on all the different consoles. What is different is the hardware possibilities we have and the number of parameters we can control with a single console. The Grandma 3 full size, for example, the largest console in our system, offers 12,000 DMX parameters and a wide range of playback possibilities. So we have a lot of executor faders, buttons and knobs. We have some smaller smart screens to control special views and we have multi-touch screens, including our letterbox screens everywhere on the console. Next to this, we have an inbuilt uninterruptible power supply. Remember the requirement of having real backup scenarios. Of course, when your power connection fails, 
this uninterruptible power supply can help you a lot in life situations, definitely. The Granamay 3 full size is also available in a CRV version. CRV stands for control room versions. As you can see, the monitor wing is missing on this console. The reason is that sometimes you have very small control rooms and the big monitor wing would be in your side access to the stage. Then you can use the CRV version and connect some external monitors and fit them to the place where they are necessary. With the connection of external screens, you could then reach the maximum amount of screens, which is possible with the normal Grandamay 3 full size as well. The next smaller console in the range is the Grandamay 3 Lite. It is also available as a CRV version and it provides 8000 parameters to control directly. We also have the letterbox screens and the smart screens to control special views. And we have a lot of playback possibilities like the motorized executor faders or executor buttons. The smaller consoles in the Grandamay 3 range are the Grandamay 3 Compact and the Compact XT. These consoles offer 4000 parameters to control. But as we will see a little bit later, we can expand all of these consoles to a maximum of 250,000 DMX parameters in our whole Grandamay 3 system. From the hardware side, the compact consoles are missing the letterbox screens, the monitor wing is a little bit smaller and we are missing some control elements like the smart screens. But we have a lot of playback possibilities as well, including motorized faders, executor buttons, the command section, which is absolutely the same as for the full size and the light, and the dual encoders to control our attributes in the most flexible way. One device in the Grandamay 3 range, which is especially relevant for installations, is the Grandamay 3 replay unit. The replay unit can also be called a console in 19-inch housing. It offers the same features and functions as the Grandamay 3 consoles and has the same connections on the backside. So your DMX outputs, some external trigger inputs like MIDI, timecode or analog remotes as well. But the replay unit can be easily built into a rack and is therefore perfect for fixed installations like theater, studios or architectural lighting control. So in most cases you will use this as a backup device or you can use it for a project where your show runs automatically or with some external triggers and where you do not need the playback or command section from the consoles on a regular base. Of course, if you have some things to program and to change on your show, you can combine this replay unit together with the console or an on-PC, for example, to program your show directly. Let's have a look at another device when we think of additional playback solutions in our small to the largest projects. The Grandamay 3 extension is the perfect solution for remote playbacks on a small footprint. It can be connected to a Grandamay 3 full-size, light or replay unit. And it offers 60 freely configurable playbacks, including 15 motorized and RGB backlit faders and 30 RGB backlit rotary encoders. So this Grandamay 3 extension can be used for a follow spot caller, a key lighting board operator, on stage when you want to remote control some sequences or looks directly, not from your control room, but from somewhere else in your venue. And therefore it makes a lot of sense that this Grandame 3 extension is connected via network. So you can integrate it to your system wherever you want. Just think of a small control system where you have a replay unit in your network rack and the Grandame 3 extension somewhere in your venue to control specific sequences very fast and easy from your executor faders. Next to the control solutions, we offer processing. And when we think of one requirement we mentioned at the beginning, we want to scale our system. To scale our system, we offer the Grandamay 3 processing units. These processing units add parameters to our system. As we learned, the different consoles can handle different amounts of parameters. When we want to control more parameters, we can add the processing units to enable those parameters and to get some calculation power into our network system. These processing units are available in three different sizes. The processing unit XL, the processing unit L and the processing unit M. 
These devices just handle different amounts of parameters. So starting with the M, which handles 4000 parameters, the L handling 8000 parameters and the XL handling more than 16000 parameters. So we make sure that even in real big systems where we want to control up to the maximum of 250,000 DMX parameters, we do not need a lot of devices when we use processing unit XL, for example. And the scaling of the system is very easy. We just connect the processing units via network to our system and the parameters will be added immediately. Furthermore, we can use DMX outputs on the backside to output up to eight different DMX universes. The GrandMA3 export nodes are a very important part of our system. Next to the consoles where we control our show, where we handle our show files and the processing units where we add parameters and calculation power to our system, we have to transfer the network and ethernet data to DMX. That's what the export nodes are doing. They can be configured from any console or on PC within your network session to provide an easy access to DMX output or a DMX input. And they are capable of handling MANET3, which is our internal network protocol, which makes sure that all of these devices are connected together. And they are capable of handling some more network protocols like streaming ACN or ARTNET. And of course, they are fully RDM compliant. The export nodes are available in three different sizes. We have the GrandMA3 8 port node with eight DMX connectors on the backside, the four port node with four DMX connectors and the GrandMA3 2 port node with two DMX connectors on the backside. So we can output eight, four or two DMX lines using these different nodes. A real outstanding fact of these nodes is that they are available as a PoE version, so a power over ethernet version as well. The GrandMA3 nodes are available in a DIN rail version as well. This DIN rail housing allows for easy mounting and fixed installations. You can see that the DMX data is connected via terminals and this device is capable of power over Ethernet. The DIN rail devices offer a housing which is especially built for mounting in fixed installations. So it is the optimized housing for easy and time-saving mounting in fixed installations of any kind. They are available as 8-port, 4-port and 2-port nodes as well. So these nodes are the perfect solution when you want to mount them in your fixed installation racks. Next to the bigger system we offer some on-PC solutions as well. In general, the on-PC solutions also work in a bigger system, so we can combine this with larger consoles or the processing units as well. But we can also use the on-PC solutions in a standalone on-PC system, where we can control up to 4000 parameters then. Especially the GrandMA3 on-PC Command Wing XT and the GrandMA3 on-PC Command Wing offer the same command section as the larger consoles, with a lot of playback possibilities as well. We just combine these devices with the freely downloadable GrandMA3 on PC software. This software is available for Mac OS or Windows 10 and offers the same feature and functionalities as the GrandMA3 software on our consoles. So we can combine this on PC software together with all the different on PC devices to build up a smaller system as well. Let's have a look at one of our examples from the beginning again, where we can see how to connect all these different devices. You can see the GrandMA3 consoles at the bottom, which is a main and a backup console. You can see the GrandMA3 on PC on the right. A GrandMA3 on PC can also be a backup solution for the console. The good thing about the GrandMA3 network is when a console fails, then all the parameters are existing in our network session. And even with the GrandMA3 on PC, we could then back up a session with up to 250,000 parameters. You can also see the GrandMA3 extension for our stage manager on the right side again, and on the left side, our nodes, which take care of outputting our DMX signal directly to our fixtures. Now we talked a lot about the different products and of the combination of the different products to build up our lighting control system, starting from the smallest to the largest lighting projects. 
But now we want to make use of clever network tools. We are working in a network and we are working in a specific infrastructure depending on our project. And of course, we need some software solutions which provide us some clever tools to control and maintain our network and our system. Therefore, we have some things in the GrandMA3 software. First of all, let's remember one of the requirements we had at the beginning. We want to work in multi-user environments. In the GrandMA3 software, we can see we can have different users. And these different users can be created by the persons who work on the system or they can be created for the different applications. So there could be a user for the system, a user for the show light and a user for the key light, for example. And all of these different users can use different user profiles. And within these user profiles, we can find a lot of default and personal settings. First of all, the views. So all the views with all the different windows we create on a console will be stored in our user profile. So we can really personalize our working space in our console. That means we can also import and export these user profiles. That makes it possible when we come to the venue and we work on a console where we never worked on before, we can simply import our user profile and the console views and windows will look exactly like we are used to work. A very clever network tool when we think of organizing our show are multiple stages in the patch. When we have a look at the patch, we can see that on the top right corner, we can change between different stages. These stages could be used for different areas of our TV studio, for example. Or we have a small festival where we want to control everything from one show file, but divide it to different stages. We can make use of these different stages in our 3D visualizer later on. So we could have one 3D for stage one, another 3D for stage two. Or we have separate areas like an LED wall, for example, we want to separate from the rest of our patch. Therefore, we could use the separation into different stages as well. The next thing is a real game changer in GrandMA3 because it is a new protocol for the MA lighting systems we implemented in GrandMA3. It is OSC, Open Sound Control. This protocol was originally invented within sound applications to synchronize different devices. But more and more, OSC takes also place in media servers, lighting devices, and all the other things which are relevant for the entertainment control as well. And we implemented this in GrandMA3. So the GrandMA3 is able to send and receive OSC commands to synchronize to sound consoles, media servers, or other elements within our show network. A small but very helpful tool is the session key to protect our network. Imagine you have created your lighting control system and all the different devices like your consoles, processing units and so on are working together in your network. And you want to make sure that no other console can join this session during a live situation because you do not want to interrupt your system working. Let's have a look how it works. We have an overview of our network session here and we can create some keys. And per default, all the consoles have the same session key. So normally you could connect all the consoles together in a network and work in a network session. But you can create new keys on your own. You can edit them, you can change them, you can just simply type in words. So this is my key, for example. And the console will take care that you get a hexadecimal key you can import and export. And you really have to export it to a USB stick and import it on another console. Only when the original key is imported, this console will be able to join your network session. Which is of course a very security relevant question. When we think of festivals or external control from third party system into our network, the input priorities will be a big help for us. We can set input priorities for all incoming DMX signals, like an ARTNET input or a streaming ACN input to our system. Within the network protocols like ARTNET or streaming ACN, we can find input priorities on the far right side. And these input priorities are exactly the same priorities we have with our playbacks as well. So we can compare the incoming ARTNET or streaming ACN signal with our internal playback priorities. That is a big help when we got external control and we want to avoid that 
an external system can control specific sequences or specific fixtures or if we want to make sure that this external system can control all of the fixtures independently from our running playback. Therefore, we can select the input priorities here. Another really powerful tool when we think of multi-user environments are data pools. Data pools can be called a show file within a show file. Think of the following situation. We are programming the show for a festival and the guy for the main act pre-programmed his show. And of course, when he pre-programmed his show, he starts to program with group number one and he has a color preset number one and two and position presets starting from position preset number one as well. Also, you have some playbacks. And of course, he normally started with the first executor on the first page. But now the lighting guy from the support act comes around with his show file. And what did he do? Of course, he also pre-programmed using group number one, color preset number one or position number one. Normally in these situations, you have to take care of merging the show files in a correct way so that everybody gets his groups and presets and playbacks afterwards on specific pages. With the data pools, we simply create a show file within the show file. So the patch and 3D data is exactly the same. We just switch the data pool and you can see the other data pool provides a new set of position presets and color presets and groups and even the playbacks can be totally different. So each user could use his own data pool. It's really the show file within a show file. So a really powerful tool in multi-user environments. And last but not least, when we think about remote access to our system, we have a new web remote without borders. The web remote in GrandMA3 is browser based. So you simply use a web browser you type in the IP address and you can connect with the console or your own PC. And you can see you have exactly the same views as on the console or the on PC software. So there is no limitation in using the web remote. We can have a look at the color picker. We can control fixtures, select them, adjusting the color using the encoder bar as well, so our dual encoders, and we can store groups, presets, or sequences. We can do everything we can do on a real console as well. So at the end, it's not only about the combination of devices and the network infrastructure we use for our smallest to the largest projects, but it is also about some clever software tools we can use to control our network. Next to our product range and clever network tools we can use, we also want to talk about the production workflow. So from the planning to the lighting control. GDTF and MVR can help us with that. These protocols were invented by MA Lighting, Vectorworks and Roby to connect the workflow from the design via the planning to the lighting control. Let's see what it's all about. GDTF is the new standard to describe fixtures, which is already validated by the DEAN organization. So your lighting fixtures work every time, no matter if you use it in your CAD planning tool or in your lighting console. GDTF and MVR are free protocols, which are unified and they are developed by industry leaders like MA Lighting, Vectorworks and Roby. You can use the GDTF file to exchange data from the CID planning tool via the pre-visualization to your lighting console. When we have a look at the GDTF description, we can see that we start with the geometry of a fixture. And this is really important because the raising complexity of the different fixture types. So we describe the fixture by its picture, by a name, a long name and so on. And then we go to the geometry to build the simple as it is in the reality, starting with a base, a yoke, a hat or different other geometries we have. Later on, we describe the DMX channels depending on the geometry. So we take the geometry and then describe the function and the feature and of course the DMX channel. Please find more information about this at the webpage gdtf-share.com where you can also find the GDTF fixture share. The MVR file format makes it possible to exchange complete data between your CID programming tool and your lighting console. 
What we can see here is a lighting plan in Vectorworks. So we have imported some fixtures and we built a nice 3D environment. Now we can use this to export this as an MVR file. When we have a look at the MVR file, we can see that all our 3D environment objects like geometry, stage truss and so on are exported. And we will also get the GDTF fixture types. So you see GDTF is a unique fixture type for all the different platforms. We can export this all together to save it in an MVR file. Now we have a look at our GrandMA3 software where we can import GDTF and MVR natively. So in our patch we just import the MVR file we already exported from our Vectorworks planning tool and all the different objects, all the geometries, all the stage elements, all the trusses and all the fixture types including the GDTF fixture description are imported as well. We can see all of these things in our 3D as well. And as you know, GDTF delivers a common way to describe fixtures, which we use in the GrandMA3 as well. Therefore, the attribute control works. So we can immediately use our 3D and our encoder bar to control the different attributes using the color picker, for example, and to start programming our show with the original lighting plan directly imported to our console. And the great thing about MVR is that this is bidirectional, so we can export it from our console if we made some changes in the patch to get this back to our planning tool as well. This was our short journey from the smallest to the largest lighting projects using the GrandMA3 product range. We also used some clever network tools to bring into our system and we also had a look at the workflow from the design via the planning to the lighting control using GDTF and MVR. I hope this was helpful for you. So if you want to get more information about this, please get in contact with your local MA distributor or us directly via help at malighting.com. Thank you very much for your attention.